everyone who's joined us. Uh, we'll, we'll wait a few more minutes as people are coming in. Um, you should see a, a slide on your screen with the title of the webinar and, and that login information there. Um, and so if you are having trouble seeing that screen, um, let us know, speak up. Um, we've also uploaded the presentation to the meeting space, so um, if, you, if you've logged in, um, you'll see that, power, or that as a PDF document as well that you'll have for future reference. Right. We have a good number of people logging in, um, so we can go ahead and get started with some of the uh, housekeeping pieces, as I'm sure others will be joining us. Uh, my name is Amy Rutherford. I'm the Director of Professional Development and Public Engagement for AZA. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to join us. We're excited to uh, review this year's grant opportunity, share some um, tips, and have you hear some stories from some successful grantees in the past, and give you an opportunity to ask questions um, and hopefully clarify some things and set you all up for success for this uh, new grant or new year of grant opportunities for Nature Play Begins in your zoo and aquarium. Um, just a few uh, items for, for using the WebEx technology. As we get started, I'm going to go ahead and be muting everybody except for our speakers, um, just to avoid any background noise or feedback that sometimes happens as people are gathered in offices or um, with animals in the background. Um, if you, you should be able to see on the bottom right-hand side of your screen a chat box. Um, and you can use that function to, there's a send to, and then there's a drop down, and you'll see everybody listed who's logged into the call. So you can choose to message a person in particular. So you, if you message um, AZA, that message will just reach me. 
or you can message to everybody. Um, we're going to be using this function to gather questions for, that we'll use at the end of the call. And of course, you'll also be able just to ask questions um, during that time. But if you'd like to, um, to send a question privately or that everyone can see, I'll be sorting through and kind of keeping track of those um, for when we turn to the Q&A. Um, and um, that's pretty much it for our housekeeping. Um, I'm going to turn it over to our uh, webinar host, uh, Janice Swaysgood, and uh, we'll get going. Also, uh, just for everyone's reference, this meeting will be recorded and we'll be sharing a link. So if there are other colleagues that are unable to join us or there are pieces that you'd like to review in the future as you're putting your applications together, you'll be able to do that um, easily through, through the recording. Shall I go ahead and take it away? Yes, go ahead, Janet. Great, thank you very much, Amy, um, for offering this series of webinars. Um, it is an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this whole process. Um, I'm very excited to be here with you all today. My name is Janice Swaysgood. I'm the director of the Natural Families Network or Family Initiatives with the Children in Nature Network and we have been in partnership with AZA over the course of this grant um, both in terms of offering resources and technical assistance as well as um, being part of the advisory committee for the grant process itself. Um, Joining us today, we also have Liesl Pimentel from the Phoenix Zoo and J.B. Head III um, with the North Carolina Aquarium on Roanoke Island. So you'll be hearing from them a little bit later. As Amy said, we will be taking questions. Um, at the end of the webinar, we, we've lofted off a good chunk of time for Q&A, um, knowing that there will be some good questions coming out of you all today. So as Amy said, either type them into the box now or you can hold it till the end of the, of the webinar itself. Um, I'd like to go over the agenda real quickly, which, um, in which I'm going to be setting, setting the grant context and benefits of becoming a grantee. Um, we'll be covering the, the RFP, the Request for Proposals for the Nature Play Begins grant cycle. Um, we'll be hitting some of the highlights of the scoring rubric, and after that, we'll be hearing from both Liesl and JB, um, some of their tips and pointers. They um, were selected for a variety of reasons, um, not to leave out the fact that they had very strong applications, um, and then we will have the Q&A at the end. Um, so I want to start off with a quote from none other than my husband, <laughs> who happens to be a conservation biologist at San Diego Zoo Global. Um, this is, comes from an article out of Conservation Biology um, that was titled, Zoo's Dream of Becoming Conservation NGOs. And it goes, about one in ten of the world's population will visit a zoo this year. What other conservation organization has that kind of opportunity? Our society has been drifting away from nature, but many long to stop the tide before it's too late, a phenomenon best represented in the movement to reconnect children to nature, spurred on by Richard Lee's last child in the woods. Can zoos and aquariums help avert this crisis? For zoos and aquariums to succeed in this endeavor, they must inspire people to get out into nature, not just return to the zoo. Zoos and aquariums, if they do it right, can connect people to nature beyond their fences. Um, I thought that was a good, um, I think everyone on this call probably has the, uh, the idea and the notion and a good understanding of the reasons why we're connecting children to nature. We all know that it's on the decline and we all know about the, the ramifications of that disconnect. Um, but I wanted to frame it in that you all have a really unique opportunity um, in, that you have to to do that, to connect more children and families to nature. So in partnership with Disney Conservation Fund, the Children and Nature Network, and the North American Association for Environmental Education, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums is able to offer the Nature Play Begins at your zoo or an aquarium grant opportunity again for this, this year, 2016-2017. Um, the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, um, as you all know, envisions a world where, as a result of the work of accredited zoos and aquariums, all people respect, value, and conserve wildlife and wild places. Um, likewise, Disney 
Walt Disney Company recognizes that conserving nature begins with connecting to nature. We immerse kids in the magic of the natural world to ignite their imagination and develop lifelong conservation values. It is our hope, they say, that our actions will inspire others to be positive environmental stewards, ensuring the health of our planet for generations to come. And that is from DisneyCitizenship.com. Uh, um, the North American Association of Environmental Education um, is also part of the advisory board for this uh, grant opportunity, this initiative within AZA, as are we at the Children in Nature Network. So the Nature Play Begins the grant. The benefits um, that we have associated with that is um, it, gives, it gives you all an opportunity to showcase your strength and build community support. Um, it, it gives you a connection to the worldwide effort to connect children and families to nature. Um, it provides a direct connection to NAAAE and CNN, which is the Children and Nature Network, I'm sure as you know. Um, it also provides a lot of networking opportunities, both online and in person, with other AZA accredited institutions that engage their guests in nature play experiences. Um, it gives an access to online platform that provides a lot of resources, a couple of which I'll mention later, uh, and tools to support nature play programming. Um, it gives the AZ website and publications will have a description of your institution's project. Um, and likewise, it will be uh, upon your registration of, if, particularly if you have a family nature club, um, and you enter it in, on the Children in Nature website, we have a movement directory there that is capturing the good work that people like you are doing all around the country. Um, last but not least, uh, you would have recognition at the 2016 AZA Annual Conference. So the Nature Play Begins grants. Um, we're starting off with application and eligibility. As you know, the grant was just released last week. The due date is July 18th by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Boards are again going to be an increment of either five or $10,000, and the total awards given, will, excuse me, Sorry about that. Um, the total awards given will be $270,000, and the notifications will be made by August 31st, 2016. We are limiting the application to one per accredited institution, and past applicants and recipients are eligible. The grant required elements um, are that we engage with a family audience, which will, um, which will, is the primary target audience of the Nature Play project. Um, and that is defined by, and you will find this in the grant application itself, but we want to have at least one parenting adult or guardian uh, with their child or children participating. The Nature Play element will involve family mentors, um, and those family mentors are going to be in support of children's play. The project should be progressive, meaning families are offered opportunities for multiple contacts over time. Um, and preference will be given also to projects that encourage and facilitate unstructured nature play, both on and off zoo aquarium grounds, and that place a greater emphasis on process-based learning than rather than fact-based learning. The outdoor experience requirement, um, sh each project should include an outdoor component that extends beyond the general admission guest experience. Uh, any potential or perceived barriers to participation in outdoor experiences should be specified and addressed. So some of the strong applicants before, um, you want to be really clear when you're hitting some of these things that are outlined in the, in the grant overview. Um, pay close attention to those things. Uh, we have seen really strong applicants hit them specifically. All of these requirements and others are a little more vague. And as you'll see in a minute, we're going to be going over a scoring rubric that we will be coming back to these requirements as we score the applicants. Um, community engagement requirement um, is that at least one community partner should be included to enhance the nature play experience. Um, that can be a partner that you already have or it can be a new partner. Um, one thing that we are encouraging folks to do as you apply 
um, and venture into this work or extend the good work that you're already doing is that you partner with a local family nature club that you can find registered with the Children in Nature Network on our website. Um, and if you need that specific information, it's in the grant application itself. The budget, um, this is another one that um, People need to be not detailed down to every penny, but you want to be pretty specific and justify the specific costs. Um, if you're submitting a request for $10,000, you must also submit a budget that scales the request back to $5,000. Um, and that is that in case we're not able to, to fund at the $10,000 level, uh, we, there's a possibility that you would still be funded at the $5,000 level. And the, the budget uh, requirements in the grant also go over the um, what funding may be used for and what it should not be used for. So you want to pay close attention to that. Um, reporting and evaluation is also outlined. There's going to be an interim report due by February 1st, 2017 that describes what the progress has been made to date um, and the budget to date and the final report will be due August 1st, 2017. Um, templates will be provided to grant recipients with the award letter. So you will know from the get-go what specifically you're going to be required to report back on. And we strongly recommend, of course, keeping tally along the way rather than waiting until the end um, to, to put things together. We also require at least one photograph um, and accompanying release. Uh, we've gotten lots of great photographs over the course of the last two years and sometimes they are uh, not usable because we can't track the people back down. So it's best if you can just get your release forms um, right from the beginning and have them for, for all of the photos you use. You never know which one will capture that magical moment. Um, and you will need to provide the copy of the, of the release form also when you turn that in. Um, let's see. There, we're working on another evaluation tool that will be provided to you to use with staff and parents, which will help assist in assessing the collective impact of, of this initiative. The, um, let's see, the scoring rubric um, is, a, is a five point scale, five being the highest score, obviously you want to score as high as you can. So we, we have um, for each of these elements that you see here, um, there are a detailed description of a rubric that we developed and used so that we can be as uh, as sub objective as possible, not subjective, but objective. Um, so those are the um, those are the scoring elements that you see there. The elements themselves are uh, we look first at an overview, um, how you describe your your grant. Um, we're really looking for those objectives to be outlined. We are looking for um, the frequency, and we're looking for those main objectives to fully encompass the nature play experience, um, have a substantial outdoor component beyond the typical guest experience, and we're looking for creativity and innovation. The family audience, um, in order to score an outstanding, we are looking for a detailed plan to target the family unit. Um, and a concrete strategy for promoting adult family member comfort levels with facilitating nature play uh, with, with kids. So we're looking for ways for you to kind of scaffold adult learning in addition to engaging children in nature play. Again, we're looking for creativity and innovation um, and that looking at the whole family as a unit. So we're not looking for stuff for just for kids, we're looking for the whole family unit to be addressed. The nature play element, um, we want a clear definition of how unstructured nature play and process-based learning will be achieved. So the more unstructured the activity is or that that element is included within structured stuff, um, we're looking for that to be outlined. Um, again, we're looking for a strong element of mentorship and creativity and innovation. And we're looking also for multiple play-based learning activities that take place off zoo and aquarium grounds. So if you're, you want to look into, again into your community and partnerships are a good way to do this to where you will have um, 
those off off campus experiences as well. The outdoor experience, um, again, we want them off grounds in addition to on grounds. Um, we're looking for boundaries uh, to participation being addressed. Um, and we're looking for exceptional outdoor components. The community engagement piece, um, I've already talked about that a little bit. You want to, you can partner with current and potential partners. They need to be specifically outlined and identified in, in your grant submission. You want partners to experience mutual benefits from the participating, uh, from participating and the project, you want it to show a great potential for continued collaboration. So it wouldn't be like a one, one off event. Um, if, if that is the case, you want it to initiate or expand a community partnership through an existing um, or new family nature club that, that will get you good points as well. Um, the other, the last three things are marketing plan, sustainability, and budget justification. So we're looking for thoroughness, um, we're looking for strategy, and we're looking for, for instance, in marketing plan, we're looking for multiple avenues of advertisement. Um, clear objectives and um, be specific with the target audience when you're talking about marketing. Sustainability, we're, we're looking for things to be well thought out and creative. Um, and I'm sure that our grantees that are about to jump on will, will be giving uh, their insights into that as well. Um, if you have a matching grant or additional means for support, that will also get you some bonus points. And lastly, the budget is um, is the only one that's not on a total five point scale. It's uh, it's eligible for for a score of five, three, or one. Um, what we're looking for is again, it doesn't have to be down to the penny, but it needs to be complete and well justified and appropriate for the scale of the project. As you are entering and hopefully already getting some draft ideas down on paper. There are two um, really good resources that are available for your uh, for your support in, in this work. Um, one is the Family Nature Clubs and You Toolkit for um, creating a Family Nature Club or there are tips in there as well for how to partner. Um, with, with family nature clubs that may already exist in your community. And there's a family nature play and you e-guide for families that you can also draw from on your application. And one thing that would be great would to be to see how you might use these two resources among the many others that are available to support your grant work. So without further ado, we're going to pass it off to Liesl Pimentel of the Phoenix Zoo. Thank you, Liesl. And, sorry, I'm just passing her over the controls. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, now you can hear me? Yes. Okay, excellent. Sorry, well, let me start again with a, a thanks to Janice and a hello to everyone. And uh, you can see in the photo there, that's me, the one on the left. And I haven't been around as long as the guy on the right, but I've been at the zoo for 12 years, and um, I'm... I'm really happy to say that the opportunities I have had for learning about, participating in, and now organizing efforts that emphasize nature play have really been some of the highlights of my career here. Mm. So that said, uh, since we were recipients of a $10,000 Nature Play Begins grant last year, uh, it's been a good year. It's been a really good year. Uh, so today I'm going to share a bit about our approach to submitting a proposal and why I thought it was successful, a successful approach for us, and then some thoughts on how our approach might be generalized and therefore helpful to any of your institutions uh, if you're considering or planning to submit for the grant. And then at the end, I'll share a quick overview of the work that we've done in the past year. And I'd also like to be upfront <laughs> and acknowledge that uh, much of this work for us was easy, and that's in air quotes, easy. Uh, we encountered minimal challenges, and the ones that we did were easily overcome or were our own mental constructs based on fear, and those were easily overcome as we just pushed through and realized that we were worried about nothing. 
Uh, and at times I found myself in the project just kind of stopping to wonder, like, what am I missing? Why is this easy? Why is it smooth? Why is it feeling like everything's going kind of perfectly? And I think some of that success may have been luck and timing, that it was a good time for us to venture into a big push for nature play. Uh, but I can also say that preparing what to share in this webinar today really helped reinforce with me that our approach was well planned. And I'm proud to realize that now and to understand how much that, that has contributed to our success. Uh, so here we go. There are four points I feel played a major role in our success throughout the proposal process and also in our work as we actually got into uh, the fun stuff. And those are foundational knowledge, inspiration, doing what was possible, and taking a team approach. I was fortunate to have had previous training opportunities. <laughs> so there are some pictures of those opportunities. Uh, first through North Carolina Zoo's Playful Pedagogy Program, and then at the time that I went through it, the so Chicago Zoological Society's Nature Start Training, which many of you may now be familiar with as a course that's offered through AZA. And so the combination of these trainings gave me a solid background and confidence in concepts and facilities facilitation of nature play opportunities. So additionally, we had other members of our education team that had ties with nature play as well. Um, some of them went through um, the Nature Start training with me. That's down at the bottom. That's Dean Watanabe. Some of you may know him and know that he's now in New York at an aquarium. Uh, but we went through that program together. So some people had professional experience in training. Some people had a personal approach to parenting that was very heavily focused on nature play. And some of our team also just had their own backgrounds and comfort level in nature and with play. And all of those things really contributed uh, to, to having a good knowledge going into things. So as we began the process of developing our proposal, all those professional and personal opportunities and experiences gave us that, that strong confidence in what we were doing. And those experiences also gave us inspiration. We had ideas from other zoos that we wanted to replicate. I, when I was at the Playful Pedagogy training in North Carolina, I just came back every time from those trainings going like, oh my gosh, I want to do this. I don't want to have that. And someday we'll do this. And uh, so it was just full of inspiration every time that I was able to go to one of those trainings. And of course, we had our own ideas too. So we knew nature play was fun and meaningful. And who doesn't want meaningful fun to be part of their work, right? So we were super excited to have an opportunity to receive funds that might help make the ideas we had possible. In the years between the nature play training I had participated in and our opportunity to apply for the grant, we had taken some small steps to integrate more nature play into our programs. And I'd consider it low-hanging fruit. Uh, we were doing things that were small, easy, didn't really cost money, and were often realized because we changed our approach to program development um, versus, you know, well, like I said, spending money or getting new things. It was kind of in our approach. And so in hindsight, I think all of that scaffolded nicely with our foundational knowledge because we were gaining some practical experience with nature play concepts uh, to, to add to just our, our brain stuff. And I bring all of that up because I think that approach runs parallel to how we approached our proposal for the grant. Uh, we tried to keep things simple and straightforward. We looked again for that low-hanging fruit that we could take advantage of. And uh, so we, we wanted to do things that would be, again with the air quotes, easy for us to do, but had the potential for bigger impact because now we would have funding that would be backing those efforts. So we wanted to propose work that we knew we could accomplish and accomplish successfully. And then finally, uh, we took a team approach. And for us, the team approach was assembling a small team of interested people who had training and experience with nature play and uh, would be crucial support of the project if we got funded and would be involved in facilitation of the project components. So again, for us, this was our vice president of education our director of education, myself, our family program supervisor, and a program coordinator within our family programs. And so we all brainstormed together to come up with ideas, and we came to agreement on a general direction of the ideas we would propose. And then our, our vice president helped kind of guide the process in the context of those rubric essentials that Janice was just mentioning. And uh, that was really useful to have one person that was kind of on point for okay, are we really looking at these concepts? Are we 
meeting this you know, requirement for this section. And uh, she was also great at really encouraging us and empowering us to think outside the, the zoo, which was something that Janice emphasized as well. So both literally and figuratively. <laughs> and that was at times a little different of an approach for us because we're very used to focusing of what we can do inside the zoo. You know, our programs are here at the zoo for the most part, and so how do we accomplish what we want to do here within our grounds? And uh, after that step of the brainstorming, I took that general direction and fleshed out the ideas, put together some additional content on logistics and lots of other details, the stuff that I guess you would say was the meat of our proposal. And then our director took that content and made it pretty. So she put it into a narrative format that read well and uh, was very cohesive. And finally, then, we all helped to review, to edit, to make suggestions on how to cut the text because there's word count limits, and we were over on almost all of them, so we had to hack away a little bit to get to our final project. So we were really fortunate to have support and trust coming from the executive level of management, and this was huge. That's kind of all I'll say about that because it, it really was huge. Uh, additionally, we asked for supporters from the community, and I mentioned thinking outside the zoo. For our proposal, we chose to engage partners in the community, both individuals and other organizations, and we valued a community voice as we went through the steps of the project, both internally and then once we got into our work uh, externally as well. And this was our plan from the beginning. So if I had to give a motto, a motto to our proposal, I think I've decided it would be inspire, collaborate, and create ripples. Uh, because we knew we could only do so much as a zoo team, so we really sought to emphasize how we could make our team bigger and extend that out into the zoo community. So our experience leading up to the proposal, writing it and uh, the success of the submission and then also our success in actually accomplishing the grant work was awesome. And uh, as I went through all of that, made you think like, that's great, just wonderful. Uh, but we haven't had training like that or your team for this grant is bigger than our entire education department at, at my facility. We don't have this, we don't have that. Uh, or whatever it is that might have given you pause or made you roll your eyes, even though I can't see you out there. Uh, trust me, I get it, been there, done that. Always jealous of other people's marketing budgets and education budgets and all that sort of stuff. Um, so let's move into how I would generalize our process for other institutions. I don't think that matters uh, as far as where you're starting at. So obviously not everyone has the same opportunities. If you haven't had training and your experience is minimal, that's okay. Uh, I would highly suggest doing some research. Read articles, check out the AZA resources that were mentioned, watch videos. There's tons of stuff that you can find through YouTube even, that you can find on other websites that focus on nature play, including the Children in Nature Network. And uh, we really felt that having a good understanding of nature play as a thing and nature play as a movement was really beneficial for us in completing our grant submission. So feel like you can get comfortable with the topic uh, as you move through this process. And if you're not inspired, I'm not sure I can help with that. <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't feel inspired at this point. Uh, but if you feel like you need ideas to encourage your inspiration, I'd say look at what others have done and gleam inspiration from that. Uh, talk to people who are knee deep in nature play efforts, either as recipients of the grants in previous years or otherwise, just because they're doing their own stuff. Uh, I don't think I've met a person yet that's into nature play and isn't inspirational and exciting and fun to talk to, and uh, people like that always get me excited, so I hope that's the same for all of you. Uh, I can say that Linda Kinney and Heidi Ferris through the Playful Pedagogy Training and Marilyn Brink and David Becker from Nature Start were some of the main people who inspired me professionally to appreciate the power of nature play. So find your people, that's huge. And then use that inspiration to dream big. The excitement, the energy that you can generate around big goals and long-term dreams, it's useful. So harness it, use it, and then be realistic. So a grant of this magnitude might be able to get you to those goals, uh, or maybe really, really close. Uh, for us, it was a good stepping stone, though. It, it wasn't to kind of the end goal, so to speak. But, but that's okay, even those small steps taking something that's doable for you and putting yourself on a course of action towards bigger goals 
uh, can be amazing. And then the process as you go through those little steps feels like it's the dream goals. <laughs> That's speaking from experience this last year. Uh, I know I'm likely preaching to the choir about teamwork and uh, delegating responsibilities and being clear on who's doing what as you move through, through the process of the proposal is important and probably a duh for all of us. Uh, but I do think that it really makes creation of the proposal less stressful and overwhelming if you do have somebody that you can uh, kind of bounce ideas off of or delegate certain steps of that process to. But if you do that, it's still important to ensure that you have a consistent voice. And uh, you want to find your supporters, both from inside and outside your facility. Find them and recruit them to be part of your grand nature play takeover. Uh, remember that that whole nature play energy part is contagious. So, uh, so if you have the enthusiasm and you go out and recruit partners with that type of energy, it's going to be a pretty easy process for you, I think. And finally, think about how you can make your proposal submission more than just a project at your zoo. We found there was a, a large interest, kind of surprisingly so, in nature play. And I believe showing how we would capture and engage that interest within our work was an important part of why our submission was successful. Uh, so we found ourselves asking the questions of, are we creating a ripple effect? And who can we partner with? And what do we have to offer to them? And how can we use community voice to engage, inspire, and accomplish our work? Uh, so if you ask questions like that, it might be useful, along with keeping in mind the title of the grant. Uh, and that was something we kind of grounded ourselves with, was that it's nature play begins at your zoo and aquarium. And, uh, and then lastly, in the few minutes we have left, uh, or that I have left to share, uh, I'd love to give just a brief overview of our work. And uh, what we did was we recruited 16 cohorts uh, family cohorts, and they went through a nature play training program with us. So we developed a three-part workshop series for them that they attended, just the adults, without their children. And uh, then each of those family units created family nature clubs. They got incentives like family nature play clubs, a zoo membership, one-on-one -on -one advising time with zoo staff to help them in whatever support and need they had. And then to culminate our project, we had a free community event in next door neighboring uh, park to the zoo, which was the Day of Nature Play. And that's where we engaged our community partners and all of those family units that had uh, been with us through the rest of the program. And we learned that Facebook was a huge, uh, a huge way to help us stay connected and to have that ripple effect because a lot of our family clubs uh, then created their own Facebook pages and uh, there were just lots of connections and spreading, spreading of the love of nature play uh, through that interesting social media outlet. And I'm happy to talk much more about this. Obviously, I could go on and on and on about what we actually did, um, but I know we have to move on. So if you're interested in learning more, uh, please just let me know or maybe I can answer some questions at the end. And uh, now it's time for me to turn it over to JB at the aquarium. All right. So JB, you should awesome. And let me go ahead and meet you as uh, well. Greetings, there everyone. You go. Yep. Greetings, everyone from the Outer Banks of North Carolina. I think we are a little opposite from Liesl. Uh We, from listening to her. Uh, Speak, we did things uh, sort of along the same lines uh, as far as the team building and everything. Uh, I definitely do not have the experience she has in education, but we do have an education department here. We also have an exhibits department, and we have a special activities section as well. When this grant came across uh, my desk and I looked at it, I'm like, this would be a perfect fit uh, for us. Uh, we had had dinosaurs out in what they call the nature play area for the last two years, and there were these big animatronic dinosaurs, uh, but they were leaving, and they were going to leave a bunch of holes out there with nothing in them. Uh, and the aquarium itself is 16-acre property, and pretty much all of our outside space is not used uh, at all. Uh, which I thought was a shame. Uh, being involved with scouts for a long time, if you're not out in the woods and having fun doing something, you're not scouting. Uh, 
so our nature trail that we had was never about nature. Uh, the only thing that we had and it was out on the far side of the property was a wildflower garden that our uh, horticulturist put in, uh, but there was nothing to draw you out there to it. So why uh, our project overview, we kind of wanted to tie it in because we're a tourist location. We're busiest during the summer and it kind of slows down. Spring it picks up with all the uh, school groups coming in, which is another big uh, hit for us, I think, on our grant proposal because we tied in packages to the visiting school groups on how they can take nature play back to their school. It's not just here, nature plays everywhere. So uh, for us, the big thing with the education folks was that this was going to be uh, uh, unstructured play. Basically, we're going to put stuff out there and see what, they do, uh, what they're going to do with it. Uh, some of the education and the SPAC folks have done uh, nature play training. Uh, so before we did anything, we did some of Google research, uh, going out and looking at other websites to see who's done what, where, and if this was even feasible for us and it's something that we could do. Uh, we also took a field trip over to the North Carolina Zoo because they do have a wonderful nature play over there and got with some of their staff. Biggest thing, once we all got back here, uh, this was not, we had leadership guidance toward the back end, but a lot of the brainstorming, it was the worker bees who wanted to make this happen. Uh, these were just your everyday educator, the folks that run our summer camps, me as far as operations saying, yes, we can build this, or I know somebody I can call. Uh, they wanted to make it fun, educational, and my kick for it was to make it ADA compliant as much as we possibly can. Because when you think of a nature play, a lot of folks think climbing factors and stuff like that, and I'm looking at it as how can I make a wheelchair go across balance beams? There's a nice big sand pit in a mud hole. How can I get someone in a wheelchair or somebody who uh, – has some type of handicap that can't get them into this space. Uh, that was one of my big pushes in this uh, for me, and it was because I think that is a person that attends a zoo or an aquarium that doesn't get the full effect of everything that we offer them. Uh, so I made that one of my major focuses. Uh, with this, because it's a multi-year grant, hopefully, uh, we added seven areas with the $5,000 that we received. Uh, but we also have a lot of room to grow because, like I said, we have 16 acres here. So our overall strategy is once we complete the research, uh, how could we relate it to our area? So our, I guess, theme for our nature play area is the Lost Woods. The reason why is because right down the road from us is the Lost Colony. We did tried to tie in a lot of things either with the aquarium or uh, local events or local history uh, from the Outer Banks to kind of tie it into the area. Uh, for your grants, it's a lot of work. And like Ms. Liesel said, you have to wordsmith your stuff so you can get your story across and the word count that you're given. I think that was one of the biggest things is when you're writing this and you're going over it and over and over it before you actually submit it, it all starts to blur together. So it definitely helps to step back and let somebody else take a look at it. Uh, one of our other downfalls for this is we're out on the edge of the ocean uh, and we do not have a nature play group here. Uh, and the closest one, I think, when I looked on the website was 300 miles away, 200 miles away, something like that. So we partnered with our local YMCA here. It's a family YMCA. Not only do they have the local gathering here, but they actually offer week-long memberships to folks who come down here on vacation. And they're allowed to come over here, plus they bring the, uh, their summer camps over here as well to utilize this outdoor space. Tip. All right, so for tips and pointers, uh, for us, uh, get help. Uh, if you're starting from the ground up and you've never done this before, it is a lot of work. 
Uh, I actually submitted a proposal to serve Akron's uh, University of Akron's alternate spring break. Uh, they showed up down here with 34 college students, and in four days they put in 1,130 hours of volunteer work. They moved like 20,000 uh, pounds of mulch into the areas. They cleaned out uh, some of the wooded areas. They helped install a lot of, and build out a lot of the stuff that we had. Many hands made for light work, and I think without those guys, there's no way impossible. There's no way possible that we would have been able to do this for the five thousand dollars that we got granted. Uh, if you look on your screens, those nice big oak trees that are lining out the root challenge. Uh, it's basically a very long balance beam. Uh, wood is a commodity reach out to the folks in your community. Those were actually pushed over across the street from us when they were putting in a building. I went over and asked for them. They said, you come move them, you can have them. That was a lot of free wood. There was a lot of community folks that came together when they found out about this, uh, where if they were gonna charge us to do something, they lowered their price. The gentleman who came out and did our stump monster uh, on the previous page did the chainsaw carvings for that. He actually cut his price in half when he actually found out what this is for. Uh, another big thing too is be flexible because no matter what you plan and how good of a plan you have, chances are some way, somehow it's gonna change. Uh, you get out there and you actually start putting stuff together. Uh, it's not going the way you want. Just step back and rethink about it. And again, this is supposed to be fun for them and they don't know that you're making a mistake. Just put it out there and see what the kids are going to do with it. Uh, one of our things was a gaming table with checkerboards. They were just wood, wood chips. Uh, found out that those things have become souvenirs for a lot of folks, and they take them out of here. People are grabbing pine cones off of the nature play area and using those as their checkers on this table now. The hopscotch, we didn't put anything out on this hopscotch area for the kids. They're using rocks and pine cones and everything else uh, out there instead of stuff. The music wall that we put up, we didn't add anything out there for them to bang onto the music wall with. They go and find a stick and come back and they can beat on the, mu the pots and pans on the music wall. So be flexible. And the big thing, kind of like what Liesl said, if you aren't getting inspired with this, uh, probably shouldn't put in a grant. And I hate to say that, but this is fun, and it gave me a chance to be a kid again because everything that we put in out there was tested by me beforehand for two reasons. One, I'm kind of a big guy, and I know if it's going to hold me, it's going to hold some of the other folks that come in here to the aquarium. Uh, but during all aspects of it, the building, the build-out, and lastly, all the way up to your grand opening of it, have fun with it. Uh, and remember, this is for the kids, and it's to get them unplugged and away from the cell phones and back out to nature. Uh, lastly, I put on here, uh, leave room to grow. Uh, we already have plans of what we're going to do. And whether we get a grant next year or not, I'm going to take money out of my budget to continue our nature play area because once it starts, it doesn't stop. You just keep going because no matter what, you can find something, every little nook and cranny that you can go to on your property and do something and relate it back to nature play. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. I'm supposed to turn it back over to Miss Janice now uh, so she can do a closing for you all. And there we go. Before we do the Q&A with this one little quote of, if a child is to keep alive his inborn sense of wonder, he needs the companionship of at least one adult who can share it, rediscovering with him the joy, excitement, and mystery of the world we live in. That's by Rachel Carson. And I just would invite you as you're entering this phase of writing up the grants and then, and, and you know, starting up or continuing the good work that you're doing, um, you remember that and that you invite not only yourself, but the, the significant adults in these children's lives to be that person, to be 
that person that will help keep alive that inborn sense of wonder. And with that, um, we are going to now open it up to questions and answers. You can either ask a general question or if you have a specific question for any of us, including Amy Rutherford herself, um, please do so now. Great. Um, so I'm actually going to jump in with a couple of questions that have come through on chat that I thought would be good to answer for everybody, and then I'm going to unmute everyone <laughs> um, so you have the opportunity to ask questions um, as well, or of course you can still send them through the, the chat feature. Um, one question that we had, um, just as a, and as a reminder, um, someone asked if the PowerPoint will be available after today. Um, we know as educators, uh, off things often come up throughout the call, so you might have gotten pulled away. Um, and the answer to that is yes. We're recording this session, so we'll be providing that recording, that video, um, to everybody that not only that was in attendance, but to others um, as well who maybe had conflicts, um, as well as the PowerPoint for the slides um, for your reference. Um, the other question that came up was whether we expect there to be future opportunities in 2017-2018 for an AZA Nature Play grant. Um, and right now, we don't anticipate another year of funding from Disney at this same scale. Um, we're always pleased when that uh, comes through each year. This is our third year of funding at, um, at this level, which has been, been great and more than we expected. Um, but as part of the program this year, we are exploring other ways to provide grant funding and resources for Nature Play for our members as we move forward. Um, so there may be uh, other grants programs or other opportunities opportunities to work with partners like Children in Nature Network and others um, to make sure that these opportunities continue. Um, but as JB said, and I think was called out in some of the application materials, one of the things that we're looking for in our grantees as well is sustainability, that we hope these grant opportunities are ways to get you started and to understand the importance and the impact of these programs and, and these spaces in, in your institutions and that they become just part of the operating budget or, or ha demonstrate their impact so that they get continued support institutionally moving forward as well. Um, we have a couple of, of questions coming up. I'm going to go ahead and unmute everybody. Um, but the first question that we got, um, which I think I'll toss to Liesl to start, um, and then others can uh, chime in, but someone asked what are examples of the low-hanging fruit, okay. low-cost okay. program, or low-cost elements to the program? Yeah, great question. Uh, for, for things that we did prior to our grant, I think it was just looking uh, overall at our programs, our family programs in particular, and saying, is there a space where we can uh, open up activities that we're doing or, uh, quite honestly, remove activities that we're doing so that we're creating more of a place for that, uh, that open-ended, really child-directed and guided free play opportunity in nature. Um, and whether that's outside, uh, somewhere around the zoo, or where we're bringing things uh, from nature into the classroom uh, that can be part of a, a play process. Uh, we also did develop a program called Nature Explorers, which was a play-based program uh, that definitely had some guidance to it because it was a program and uh, children were unaccompanied by their, their adults or their caregivers. Um, but uh, that, that was a really fun process for us to just really work on a program that was more imagination-based than uh, science and, and kind of fact-based and, and learning-focused, um, but more of that understanding that the, the fun, the imagination, the play is the learning process for this, this particular program. Um, and then low-hanging fruit that was in our grant, I think was that we, you know, I, I talked about having a, the kind of the end goal or your big, your dream goals. And uh, what we started off doing uh, through this grant is work that I wouldn't consider that big dream goal. I mean, I'd love to have an adventure playground in the Phoenix Zoo, but <laughs> that may be a pipe dream. Um, so having training Maybe. courses right. and implementing yeah. uh, so you know, these, these family nature clubs and how we can support the families doing those, I would consider that low-hanging fruit for uh, where we'd like to go in the future. Great. JB, do you have anything to add from low-hanging fruit in your program? 
for me, it was real simple. We need to give the kids out here something to do, uh, especially because we're on the beach. Uh, this is one of the few areas out here that actually is shaded, which is a key thing in 90 to 100 degree heat. Uh, low hanging fruit for me was going through all the different research we did and all the magazines and websites and stuff and looking at stuff and saying, that's really cool. Is it something we could build? And can we do it cheaper than what they want to charge us? Uh, the whole thing of designing a nature play area for someone uh, or having somebody come in and design a nature play area, you know your space. You know what you can put in there. Again, it if it looks like a professional company came in and did it, the kids probably aren't going to have as much fun on it if you just go out there and, I mean, logs, rocks, sticks, those, their kids are going to be happy. Sand, dirt, mud, water. Make it easy and then stick some signs up. You know, our education people did all the a lot of the text for our signage and it was parent prompts. We didn't want to tell them what to do but we want to give the parents something to take home with them. Stop listening and learn hear what's around you. And can you actually go home and in your backyard hear the birds, hear the frogs, hear the crickets? Same thing you get to hear here. Great. Um, another question that came in, um, and I'll ask Janice to go ahead and start with the, the response to this and others can chime in. Um, can you clarify what is meant by the strong element of mentorship in the nature play section of the rubric? Um, specifically, is it mentorship between the, the caregiver, parent and child, or zoo staff and parents? Sure, thank you. Um, it's, it's kind of a combination of both. If, if you're dealing with a population of parents who is unfamiliar with nature play and letting their kids, maybe they're not comfortable letting their kids kind of run free and use the balance beam that JB showed us, uh, maybe they're afraid their child's going to fall off and get hurt and they're not willing to do that, then mentoring that adult into letting their child have a little bit more freedom to take appropriate risks. Um, and if if, um, if the the mentorship can be directly to the children themselves as well, um, we try to have it used through the go through the the caregiving adult because they're the ones who are going to be with them, you know, offsite. But often that involves modeling. So I would say there's a combination of the two. Great, and I think um, that hits on a piece that I just that has been. Uh, touched on a few times throughout this that I think is really important for as a take home for um, especially new applicants is really thinking about how are you not only providing these experiences in, in your institution and with your programming, but always keeping an eye toward how you are supporting um, this kind of connection with nature and comfort in nature for the parents and the children as they move forward. Um, again, with the Nature Play Begins and what, what JB had said around, um, you know, making sure that, that um, your, the parents are partially the audience as well um, is a, a key piece for this. Exactly, yep. Right, um, and we actually have a, a, another question. Um, Oh, uh, from Lisa at the Buffalo Zoo, um, who is going to share some experience, but she is not on a microphone, so I'm going to share for her. Um, so last year, the Buffalo Zoo received a grant to involve our local urban community centers. We put on workshop, workshops for the families at the community centers where we practiced nature play, and they went really well. The kids had fun, and the parents were involved and supportive. The next part of the grant involved getting the families to join our family nature club and come to nature play events throughout the year. We offered a free nature play exploration bag to families at their first nature club event, along with bus passes to allow them to get to the events. We had a very hard time getting of the, any of the urban families to come to the events with several emails reminding them of the events along with handing out a calendar of events at the workshop. Can you suggest ways to encourage these urban families to come to the events and have you had any experience working with this population in nature play? I can jump in on that. Uh, this is Liesl again. Um, because it sounds like uh, Lisa's experience or, you know, what they offered was actually very similar to what we did as our, uh, for our grant. And so perhaps these are things that you tried um, 
but uh, one thing that we kind of didn't realize so much, it just happened really nicely, and, and I think we, we started to expect it as we started getting closer to planning our Day of Nature Play event, and I had more eyes on that park space and was really realizing how many families actually used that already, and those were much more of the urban families that are, are a little different of an audience that's actually coming into our zoo paying admission. Um, so I think going, what, what I took away from that, uh, that experience and uh, process was that going to the places where those families already are can be an important part to, uh, to getting them to participate and engage with you outside of the, the workshop arena. Um, so if you're, depending on where you're setting up your events to be, that could be something to think about. Mm. And uh, again, not, not really knowing how much connection you have to these families mm. that you did the that workshops so with. But I mentioned that Facebook was something that really surprised us on how connected that kept us to families. So if that's something, uh, just another way to kind of encourage and stay connected, in addition to emails, um, the, the social nature of it can be very addictive for people, as we all probably know. Um, so I, I feel like we really use that to our advantage once we realized it was kind of taking off. She says thank you. Mm. <laughs> I think there's definitely a lot of pieces in what you did also oh, that, that do address a lot of potential barriers, um, so things to think about for people um, as they're putting them mm -hmm. together. Transportation can there. often be a challenge, um, so I think it's, it's identifying all of the barriers and, and finding the, the ways to address them um, are, are, will be important for strong applications as well. Any additional questions for our presenters before we wrap up? I did see one other one in the chat about the budget um, that we can, I know we need to wrap it up here, but um, the question was, is there a list of things that you can and cannot use the budget, such as using a small portion of the money to help in one of the program coordinators in Nature Play? There is. Um, there is a list of what you can and cannot use the money for um, in the in the application itself. Um, it may be used for materials, equipment, staff salaries, and benefits, but only for new or newly assigned staff. Um, it can be used also for transportation, training for staff and or community partners, travel meetings, marketing, promotion, etc. cetera. Um, indirect costs cannot exceed 10%. Um, and it cannot be, the funding cannot be used for developing online or web-based elements of the program. Um, and if you have any other questions specific to the, um, to the application, there is information on who to reach out to within the application itself, as well as any of us that are here on the webinar today. Great, thank you. Um, the last thing I wanted to address was just a clarification. Um, we had a, the deadline, as, as Janice mentioned, um, for the grant applications uh, is um, Monday, July 18th at midnight. Um, we had a typo in our most recent member newsletter and insight that um, said they were due June 18th. So for all of you who uh, may be panicking that they're due this Saturday, just <laughs> that was not the case, um, and they will be due uh, July 18th. So that's correct on the website and all of those other places, um, just a typo in that. Um, newsletter. I want to thank you all for joining us and for the great questions and sharing um, that occurred. Thank you to Janice, Liesel, and JB for sharing their expertise. And finally, a huge thank you to the Walt Disney Company for their continued support of AZA's Nature Play Begins in Your Zoo and Aquarium. Um, we look forward to, in addition to this grant opportunity, please keep your eye on our website, that Nature Play site, um, as more resources will become available. Um, we'll have uh, another e-guide that will be coming out soon, specifically aimed at educators um, as well. Um, and we will be doing a webinar series that will uh, be starting up every other month. We'll be featuring um, speakers both from within our community and our partners sharing um, lessons learned for nature play and um, 
tips and, and resources for improving your programs um, and sharing your successes. So um, if you are not already a member of the Nature Play group on the AZA network, that's a great place to join to make sure that you know when these, these webinars and, and resources are made available to the community. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can definitely uh, reach out to me. Um, or any, or uh, to Janice as well on uh, the email that you see on your screen. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the week, and uh, go make an impact and have some fun. Thank you, everyone, and good luck in the process. Thank you.